Manchester, Madrid, Rome, Lisbon, Liverpool, Moscow, Milan, Istanbul, London. Just about every major European city has at least a couple world-famous soccer teams. But what about here in Berlin? Despite being capital of football-crazed Germany, Berlin zone is being a bit of a soccer black hole, better known for thumping techno and fine art than for sports. Hertha are the city's biggest team. Yes, they usually play in the Bundesliga, but they struggle. And they've been the only top team in town for a long time. Berlin hasn't had two teams in the Bundesliga since the 70s. It's a city with a lot of football, but I don't think it's a football city. Here's Hertha legend and current manager Michael Pritz's response when I asked him if Berlin is a football city. <laughs> It could be better, of course. Uh, but that looks set to change in this season. As now, the newly promoted Union Berlin from the east and Hertha in the west both represent Berlin in the Bundesliga. Something you can't say for anywhere else in Germany. Is this the season Berlin finally becomes a football city? Or has it always been one? There's constantly a game on. Berlin's got the most teams playing at every level in the country. It's not like people don't love soccer here, but there are reasons it's not seen as a football city. Let's start with those. Berlin has a historical feature that sets it apart from just about every city in the world. Even today, all this is played out in the shadow of the Berlin Wall. It's not just the dark rooms that make Berlin special. Few places on earth have witnessed such a tumultuous past as this city, and it's this history that continues to define Berlin. The city was smack in the center of the Cold War. Germany was split between East and West, while the capital was divided as well. Roughly 40 years of division shaped today's football landscape. Passion for football is built on rivalries, duking it out with hated neighbors. Not easy to do when there's literally a wall cutting your city in half. Union fan and writer Ingo knows all about this. Hertha was the best club in the West, uh, Union, Union was the club in the East, so they supported each other. So there was like a friendship even, yeah. In East and West, they drank different beers and even had different lights at their crosswalks. No surprise, they had vastly different football cultures. East and West Germany had separate leagues, meaning many of Berlin's biggest clubs, like Hertha and Union, have rarely played each other. West Berlin was surrounded by East Germany, cut off from regional competition. Isolation meant most teams couldn't push each other or develop lasting rivalries. When the wall came down, established clubs in the west of Germany had the cash to poach players from eastern sides. And Berlin's been a relatively poor city until recently. <laughs> Eveline has been a Hertha fan for decades. <laughs> <laughs> She's proud of how much her club has gotten out of a limited budget. <laughs> Rich Western clubs have dominated since the fall of the wall 30 years back. Former East German clubs are a rarity in the upper leagues, which means Hertha and Union don't have much competition nearby in the top tier. Not easy to be a football city with empty coffers and limited local competition, but constant change is built into Berlin's DNA. The city's recent growth means fewer than half of Berlin residents were born here. Newcomers arrive with established footballing loyalties, and it's often easier to find bars for teams from other cities than it is from Hertha. Arriving from football mecca London over a year ago, Theo represents a new wave of soccer fans in Berlin. Berlin is definitely not a football city. <laughs> but it's not all bad. Uh, being part of the Premier League, it's a lot more about the external factors, so dictates when the matches are and where the stadium is and how much the tickets cost. Whereas here, you really, really do feel like the fans come first. Yep, there are plenty of reasons Berlin could soon become a football city. Things are changing for both of the city's top clubs. On paper, Hertha, the biggest club in the city, should be a footballing power in their own right. 
West Berlin's top side were founded before the turn of the century, have plenty of history, and are an original Bundesliga member. Hertha draw an average of 49,000 fans a game, more than Chelsea, Juve, and PSG. Unfortunately, big crowds and a boisterous Oskurva aren't enough to guarantee a good atmosphere at the massive Olympic Stadium, which is still half empty with 40,000 people in it. Come on, it's Hertha. They just haven't captured the city's imagination. Solomon Kalou is probably Hertha's most recognizable player. Still, he told us his favorite part of living in Berlin is the peace and quiet. You go outside the city, you not bother too much by fans, and I think that would be the big difference that I have in London. Not sure if that screams football city. Hertha's ads from last season actually had the motto of in Berlin you can be anything, even a Hertha fan. Inspiring. Despite their tradition and fan culture, Hertha have a reputation for being a bit soulless. It doesn't help that they're so middle of the road on the field. Ben Ferry covers Berlin's lower league football for Bloody Hell magazine. <laughs> I've got nothing hugely against Hertha, but they, I find them very boring. What some find boring means authenticity to longtime fans. That might change. Hertha clearly have grander designs. An investor pumped 125 million euros into the club this offseason, leading to some exciting new signings, including breaking their transfer record on Dodi Luca Bacchio. They've also got a new coach and high expectations, which they think could transform the city's soccer scene. We need some some uh, some uh, success to to build a big uh, football community as we as we yeah, can see it in Dortmund or in Gelsenkirchen. While Hertha claim to represent the whole city, Union haven't strayed from their local eastern roots. Union stand for the best of Berlin soccer. They have a storied history presenting themselves as an alternative to the state police-backed Dinamo Berlin in the DDR era, and they have an intractable relationship to their neighborhood of Köpenick. Plus, the fans have literally given up blood, sweat, and tears for their club. It's not like 2008-9. That was like the, the last rebuilding of the, the stadium where a lot of more than like uh, 2,000 fans actually took part voluntarily, yeah. Union's fan actions have made global headlines, perpetuating an oft oversimplified myth. By now, many fans roll their eyes when they hear the phrase cult club. Yes, I'm tired of that, yeah, really. Union's improved play and the legendary status of their fan culture has caused some growing pains. This family feeling was being uh, um, yeah, challenged at the moment. In the past three years, the stadium was almost at every game sold out. Uh, we have now 30,000 members. You know, we had like, I think, five years ago, we had around 12,000. In typical fashion, Union didn't raise ticket prices for their first ever promotion to the Bundesliga. It'll be a tough slog at the top, but selling out the stadium won't be a problem. Union and Hertha may have had a crosswall friendship in the old days, and this is only their third ever season in the same league. Still, Union's promotion could reset things. Union and Hertha aren't exactly fierce rivals, but if Union can manage to stay up long enough for the two clubs to develop a history playing against one another, this derby might just be what it takes to ignite the soccer scene in this city. But does Berlin really need Hertha and Union to succeed to become a football city? Or has it been one all along? What's a football city? It's not uh, when you look only like it's uh, a success like in in professional football, when you look at the culture, culture is very diverse. Football culture in Berlin, we have like more than 400 football clubs. Berlin has just about as many soccer teams as dinner stands. You can't walk more than five minutes without stumbling on a charming, historic ground. The clubs dotting the city have proud histories and ties to their local communities. So let's run through a dense and diverse footballing landscape little known to those outside of the German capital. BSC Germania, founded in Berlin in 1888, is the country's oldest active club. Ethnic clubs like Turkiyumspor, Maccabi, or Beaka double as community centers for immigrant or minority groups. 
Perkeem Square were even on the verge of promotion to the second division in the 90s, but were falsely penalized for incorrectly registering a foreign player. I guess that's just multicultural Berlin for you. Babelsberg, based just outside of Berlin, play in the same ground as women's powerhouse Turbina Potsdam and sport a politically engaged ultra scene. Former Bundesliga side Tennis Borussia, or Tebe, have a different style of support, but equally progressive identity. Wir sind der Verein, bei dem die Fußballfans gegen Homophobieaktionen angefangen hat damals. Wir sind ja sehr stark dabei, unsere eigen oder waren dabei, unsere Vereinsvergangenheit aufzuarbeiten. Also die, die Geschichte der jüdischen Mitglieder vor 33. Their history in West Berlin and the regional leagues in the 90s means that TB seen both Union and Hertha as rivals. Also TB hat aus früheren Zeiten eine starke Rivalität mit Hertha und mit Union. Es ist natürlich heute alles nicht mehr so wichtig, weil die einfach so viel weiter oben spielen, aber vor gar nicht so langer Zeit, das war glaube ich vor fünf Jahren, sind wir noch von Hertha Fans überfallen worden bei einem Auswärtsspiel. Not all Berlin football history is glorious. Just look at Tasmania Berlin. Tasmania have the proud distinction of the Bundesliga's worst ever record and it's a stat they've held on to since 1956. Or there's Dynamo, 10-time DDR champs, formerly favored by the East German secret police. Today they play in the fourth division, but are still probably Union's biggest rivals. Union fan Ingo won't even say their name. No, I'm not going to say the name. Because no. I was going to ask you. <laughs> so you might have noticed a fair amount of bald heads heading into the stadium. And I wish I could tell you that there was an alopecia outbreak in East Berlin, but unfortunately, Dinamo has a reputation of being filled with right-wing fans. So in the off chance they can smell my ethnic background, I think it's time we get out of here. For every cool team playing at the local or regional level, Berlin has about 15 non-league sides. It's non-stop football here in Berlin, and all of these lower division clubs have their own identities and stories to tell. There's a sizable gap between these smaller clubs and Hertha and Union at the top. There's this whole striving to be Berlin's third biggest team. It's a bit of a sad claim, you know, because once you get to that level, this, this third team, your attendances are so low. The scene is fantastic, but it seems like a waste with all these awesome teams whiling away in the fourth, fifth, and sixth divisions. Berlin is nothing if not constantly changing. Soccer here is no different. You might expect more from a German city with four million residents, but Berlin is buzzing about having two teams in the Bundesliga for the first time in over 40 years. It will be, of course, a lot of pressure in the, in this, in the city, like a, a city tournament between Hertha and, and, uh, and Union. Though plenty of the city's football fans might not even be watching the derby. But if you're living in Berlin and you're watching just these two clubs, Union Hertha, you're missing out on so much football. And there is drama, there is action. You're liable to get laughed at for suggesting Berlin is a soccer city. It's still a far cry from London or Madrid, but things finally seem set to change at the top thanks to Union and Hertha. And as we've seen, the basis is there for even more once you scratch past the surface.